and welcome back everyone. It is the first weekend of the new year and I'm basically summing up everything of last year. So my it's my top videos of the of basically 2018. My top 10 worst, my top 10 best movies and one that I started last year that I really enjoy doing so I figure I'll make it a yearly thing as well. The top basically the highest grossing lowest to lowest to highest grossing a studio of last year. Now, uh, basically, to do this, I have to basically look at every movie, major movie, even minor movie that came out last year. Go to Box Office Mojo, find the budget, basically look at what they made, do the math on it, and see what was the overall profit of each studio. Now, several things that need to be kept in mind. These numbers are not going to be uh, correct. They're not the actual numbers. I don't know the actual... Um, with a budget, that's actually not hard to find. You can usually find the budget for any movie with a little luck. With the marketing, that's next to impossible to figure out. Unless it's been publicly publicly stated what the um, uh, marketing budget of a movie is, then you can't you can't give a definite answer. You can just give a general assumption on what based on how often you saw marketing for it, be it a trailer or a TV spot. And how much the movie was made on. A larger movie will generally have a bigger marketing budget than a smaller movie. That said, though, most movies won't have marketing budgets that exceed their actual budget. Surprisingly, you'll see a bit more with the smaller movies, like a movie that costs like six million to ten million. You might see a higher marketing budget than what was actually shown there, but or was actually made on there. But it's a rare circumstance. So, like I said, these are not going to be exact. I did the best I could with the numbers I had, uh, but. I feel the general placement is probably still correct, give or take a few. But anyway, let's let's get into this. So the studios we have to consider are like the ma are the major studios. So Disney, uh, Disney, Universal, WB, Sony, Fox, Paramount, and because Fox is it, it, so far nothing is said otherwise. Fox is basically going to be merged into Disney soon. We don't know if Fox is going to uh, studios is going to stick around. If they're going to just keep it separate, or if they're going to just merge it in. Uh, and therefore no longer have Fox Studios. So I figured, is there another film studio that I can include on there um, to basically supplant that? And I said, well, let me look at some series that had major hits. And Lionsgate, I figured, it's probably the next best option. So let's get to it. There's seven studios in total. We're going to basically just go down the list on where they basically stand and why they basically stood there. So at number seven was, in fact, Lionsgate. Now, the reason uh, Lionsgate came in at number seven is Lionsgate had a couple solid little hits here and there. They had a Simple Flavor. And, I mean, I think the movie that made the most from the... Again, this is all my math, so it could be... It's probably wrong. I mean, the math itself I did is right, but the numbers are probably wrong. Um, the, the one that actually had the highest um, profit was over or movies like Overboard and Simple Favor... They made almost simple favor. Almost made about thirty bucks when uh, thirty million bucks when you consider that it was only made on roughly twenty million dollars. It made about ninety three, but the general consensus is you got to take a third out because the theater has to gets a cut of the profit. So you got to take about a third out on average. Then you got to factor in the marketing. But for a twenty million dollar movie, the marketing couldn't have been much higher than maybe fifteen million bucks, maybe forty if you want to get uh, really a uh, really hardcore into it. But it's it's unlikely due to the fact I don't remember seeing a lot of trailers until we actually saw the mark the until we got close to the movie like a month before the movie and Overboard Overboard was made on a lot it was made on only twelve however it was one of the few movies I felt got a larger budget than its actual uh, marketing budget or uh, production budget because I actually remember going into the theater and seeing a commercial. Uh, you know, it's like seeing, I can't remember the actor's name, but say, we're, see, the actor who plays the guy who gets his head, he's like, he's pretending to be that guy, he's the actor and all that. They were advertising the movie outside of a trailer. So I felt that earned it a bit of a higher marketing budget. But that made like 32. And then you get, uh, didn't you get a couple of films like Acrimony, which from what I could tell, probably just barely broke even. Uh, com the Commuter made around twenty million dollars, give or take. It actually made like a hundred, like one hundred and twenty million dollars. It was probably the highest grossing film of anything Lionsgate put out. However, it was also made on a budget of forty million, which, and it probably had about a twenty million dollar marketing budget. So, despite the fact that it made a solid little bit of money, it ultimately did not do well. I mean, did not. 
it made money, but it didn't, like, break the bank. But unfortunately, when we get to the second half of the movies that I was looking over, I mean, Hellfest probably broke even, if not made, maybe about a million dollars. Then your Winchester probably made about 18 million. It was only made on 3.5 million to end up making 41 million. Uh, and you, you figure probably about five or ten million in marketing. So yeah, ultimately it made a nice little chunk of change for the amount of money it was made on. But then, get, but the problem that Zion's Gate had is its flops killed whatever little momentum it was making because the Spy Who Dumped Me probably lost about twenty million. Hunter Killer probably lost at least forty one million. Uh, Traffic lost probably only about three million. Er, early Man. So if at this rate they probably wouldn't have lost money then a little film came called robin hood came out and robin hood last night and i remember i did this should know i don't factor in the amount of, the amount of money they uh, these movies that came out last year make this year so aquaman for instance whatever movie and money it's made currently this year i don't factor in for last year i'm just factoring in everything they made up until december 31st robin hood as of december 31st now granted should i saying this with the preface it that uh, because of the new year, they didn't actually update Monday, so I, it's probably a couple million off. Um, but Robin Hood had only made $73 million, not factoring the third they take out, so it probably only made roughly around $49 million. And then you got to factor in the movie was made on a $100 million budget, would probably, uh, between Mortal Engines and this, which were, actually had the exact same marketing budgets, this probably had a bit more marketing put into it because I remember seeing more trailers for it than Mortal Engines. Uh, so 170 million. That means this film lost 126 million dollars last I checked. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff you lose your job over. Um, and ultimately, when I did, ended up doing the math, it was in the negative. About 117 million dollars in the negative. This was not a good year for Lionsgate. So the Lionsgate came in at number th seven. Uh, coming in at number six would be... Well, I just want to be sure I'm in the right spot here. I got... Would be... Oh, no. Over here. Paramount. Paramount comes in at number... Now, Paramount didn't... Every other film on this list did a lot better than Lionsgate because they actually made money. Uh, or every other studio, I should say. Because they actually made money. Uh, but La Paramount still didn't have the best of you. They had a couple real solid hits on end with like Mission Impossible, which again I'm just gonna give you the overall what they what I, I kind of determined they made. We'll occasionally give the uh, the number between the uh to justify it. Made something around two hundred million dollars. Hell, a Quiet Place. Quiet Place was interesting. That was another one I feel probably had a higher marketing budget than its production budget. It was only made on seventeen million, but I remember seeing the trailer pretty often, so we probably had like a 20 30 million dollar marketing budget on there but it still made 340 million dollars it made around 160 when it was all uh, 66 when it was all said and done so they already had two films together that made 366 million dollars plus adding on something like uh, book club that the one that came and went made about 40 million from what i could tell um and they already had a pretty solid year however <laughs> they now, like I said, every other film, uh, studio on this list has made money. So take what that however how you want to interpret it. But they lost probably about $24 million on Sherlock Gnomes, probably around $39 million on Annihilation, only around $7 million on uh, Nobody's Fool, $41 million on Overlord. That was a, bit, that was a hefty loss. Um, Action Point probably lost some good $25.5 million. And... As of December 31st, Bumblebee had lost them $158 million. Now, that number has very much changed because I, at the time I had done uh, looked up the numbers, it only made about $157 million. It's hit about $190 something million. It will cross $200 million. At the rate Bumblebee's going, Bumblebee is getting good reviews. It's actually got good word of mouth, good legs, all that. So I feel Bumblebee will probably actually break even, if not make a little bit of money, which is good. Bumblebee deserves it. I actually very much like Bumblebee. I did. Problems aside, I did have some minor problems, but yeah. Uh, so Paramount comes in in the number six spot with $112 million in profit. So they they did okay. They did okay. Uh, the next one on the list. Now, number uh, five and number four are close together. 
But then one that came in next on the list, and where are you? Was it this one? Nope, it was you were the last one on the list, weren't you? Of course you were. Of course you were. Um, it was Fox. Now, Fox actually had a really solid year this year. Like, now we're getting into a jump of profit that says, oh, no, they had a solid year this year. Uh, Deadpool 2 and Bohemian Rhapsody alone both had made over three. Actually, Bohemian Rhapsody had made, despite being made on making less money uh, worldwide than Deadpool 2, actually made more money profit-wise because it was made on just so much more, less money. It was only made on $52 million. Probably had only around a $50 million marketing budget to it. Deadpool 2, though, was made on $110 million, Probably had about $75 million to it. Maybe you could round it up higher to maybe like $200 million. They know how to use a minimal marketing budget, though, so take that for what it's worth. So, I mean, just together, that was about uh, 360, uh, almost 370, almost $380 million. Then Maze Runners, Death Cure, didn't make a, didn't do amazing. The Maze Runner series continued to decline uh, financially um, with uh, each film, but it's, they still ended up making money. I, it, it was um, estimate. I estimated they made probably around fifty million dollars. Uh, hell, Love, Love Silent made a nice little profit, twelve million. Nothing amazing, but not to finance some smaller indie picks. Um, but then you do get some bombs, like the Predator movie. Oh, that that hurt. That that hurt me as a guy who really in, actually kind of enjoyed the Predator movie. Problem is though, it was made on eighty-eight million, and it only made a hundred and sixty, uh, like yeah, hundred and sixty million when it was all said and done. And on an $88 million budget for a movie like The Predator, which I saw a solid amount of marketing for, probably at about $50 million at minimum. So that lost a nice chunk of change. Uh, I mean, the favorite wasn't probably wasn't designed to make money. Uh, it was designed, And it's getting Oscar buzz. Uh, the Darkest Minds, that lost a nice little chunk of change. Bad Times at the El Royale. But what immediately separates this from the other two, there were no financial death bonds. There was, there was nothing that was going to kill the studio that came out and lost money. Nothing lost over, say, uh, $30 million. Maybe 32 with The Predator. That was about it. Uh, so th basically, when it was all said and done, they ended up making right around $602 million. Uh, so, I mean, Fox had a pretty solid year uh, for this year. Absolutely. And then, here we go. Then, uh, right out the gate, coming in the number four spot, is Sony. Sony comes in with a grand total of $616 million. Sony had actually a really good year between Hotel Transylvania 3, which was the highest grossing of any of the Hotel Transylvania movies, so you'll know they'll make a fourth one. Uh, Venom, which overperformed immensely. It, made, it was at uh, like $855 million, uh, and when you factor in that, it was made on $100 million. Probably made, uh, had $100 million, so $200 budget uh production and marketing together and then you take the third out it still made like 370 million dollars profit so that that and then you also have even peter rabbit made over 130 million 334 million uh equalizer 2 he got a nice little profit they did have a couple hit and misses with like um sicario 2 did not do well that lost about 10 million alpha lost money white boy rick proud mary like the, once you get into some of the other, a lot of the smaller films, they lost money on them. They did, but they didn't lose anything severe. I think the biggest loss I was able to calculate for them was um, Girl in the Spider's Web, which lost probably about forty-five. Oh no, Holmes and Watson lost about forty-six million as of when I did the numbers. But still, ultimately, so really, it was so it was um, basically Venom and uh, Hotel Transylvania that really saved them. But Peter Rabbit, I don't, I can't forget Peter Rabbit, both because had those um, losses not terribly hurt them, they would have actually been looking at something more akin to closer to a seven hundred million dollar a year. They would have been just fine. Uh, so yeah, so just to recap right now, because we're about to go into the top three here. At number seven, Lionsgate lost money, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of one hundred and seventeen million dollars. Paramount made around $112 million, number six. Number five, Fox came in, uh, $602 million. And then Sony comes in, number four, with $616 million. So we are now in the top three. And I say the top, and I, I kind of, I recapped there because the top three all made over a billion dollars this year. Uh, now, that said, 
this was a weird thing. I didn't even realize this when I did the numbers initially. I just wrote down the numbers and I was good. When I, and then I started listening. I'm like, wait, what? WB and Universal actually are technically tied for the three and two spot because uh, because they made – they probably didn't make the exact same. But when I – the numbers I had, the math I did, they made, no joke, the exact same number or the exact same amount. However, they made $1.247 billion. I wish I was joking about that. I really do. But they did. They made the exact same amount of money. Uh, again – Doing the math that I did, they made the exact same amount of money. Um, with the numbers, again, that I have. I feel I should keep prefacing that because I know for a fact these are not correct. <laughs> They're just the best I could do with the information I had. But there was a difference between the two. And the re and because of that, I put Warner Brothers in number three and Universal in number two. Now, the what, why is that? What's the reason for that? Well, honestly, it's pretty simple. Because both of them had a lot of films that made over $100 million in profit. In fact, one of them had a, a movie that made $200 million. Uh, the Nut actually made over $200 million in profit for Warner Brothers. The Meg made about $150, a little over. Uh, Crazy Rich Asians made over $109. Star Wars made $194, almost $200. So they had a pretty good year. Aquaman... At the time of the recording, made about 170 million. That number's gone way up. They're they're now the highest grossing DC movie, DCEU movie of all time. Um, so yeah, I, they they were doing fantastic. However, of the two of them, it was universal due to the fact that Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom made somewhere in the neighborhood of 570 million dollars worth of profit give or take obviously uh plus they also had a couple of films that made over 100 million uh the grinch at the time of the recording or at the time of the uh research made 163 million dollars uh halloween it made rough uh, made 139 close to 140 million dollars mamma mia 136 million dollars um 50 shades free whether i like it or not made 138 million dollars so both of these uh, studios had a lot of films that made over a hundred million dollars. Only one of them, though, had one that made over five hundred million in profit. And again, when I say these numbers, it's in profit, not the actual amount. So yeah, I mean, because of that, I get I had to bump it over to Universal's side. Now maybe if I were to actually learn the actuals, I would find out that's not the case. Probably that's not the case. One is probably made higher more than the other. But it kind of doesn't matter, because at this point, we all know who the highest grossing studio profit-wise was this year. It was Disney. Disney made $1,482,000,000. Uh, now, why is that? Well, let's take a guess, shot in the dark here, of why that probably was. Maybe, and, and here's the thing, of all the studios... Disney actually had probably the least amount of films that came out this year. I, I'm not joking. They they because I I didn't have any trouble following on how many films they put out this year. You had Black Panther, you had Avengers: Infinity War, Incredibles 2, Ant Man and the Wasp, Solo, Wreck It Ralph, A Wrinkle in Time, Christopher Robin, The Nutcracker, and Mary Poppins. Now, at the time of the research, Mary Poppins had lost about 114 million, but it only made 174 million. Mary Poppins now has crossed over 200 million. Uh, the Nutcracker lost money. That that was no brainer. A Wrinkle of Time lost a solid amount of money. That they, they that that was something people were probably losing their jobs over. Same with Nutcracker. Solo. Oh man. See what really hurt them this year was Solo. I'm, I'm I'll say this. They could. What really hurt them? They made 1.4 billion dollars in profit. Um, but they uh. uh they, 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 they screwed the pooch on Solo. They really, and I like Solo. I do. Um, uh, I did like Solo very much, but it's, um, it, it's, it was just a collective of bad shit going on, uh, to cause them to lose almost $230 million dollars. Is what they almost lost. Now, had they not had the issues with Ron Howard and everything like that, with the with the Lord of Miller and then Ron Howard, they 
they might, they probably would have actually made a little profit with this film. But ultimately, all the shit that went on, film didn't even make $400 million. A Star Wars film in this day and age did not make $400 million. Hell, a Star Wars film in general did not make $400. $400 million. Uh, I just... It's... It's just... It's kind of mind-boggling that it just went bad, went that bad. Now, I have plenty of... I've, I've gone on length of why I think Solo did as bad as it did. Um, A, movie no one was talking no, talking about. B, all the stuff in the back. Uh, or in the in the back. Um, in the back. Um, behind the scenes. But I'll, I'll be honest. I do think it was a mistake to put Solo in the, in, in the summer. It was it's particularly this summer. It was a, a last summer. It was a mistake to do that. Because you had it going up against Avengers. Grand Avengers was in its fourth week at that point, but it still made roughly around two twenty something million dollars. I think. Let me actually get that number up right now as I'm talking here, because I'm pretty certain it made like twenty million in its fourth week. Uh, let's see, Avengers: Infinity War. Ah, come on. Uh, weekend to weekend, it made and week in its fourth week. Yeah, it made around twenty nine million dollars. Now let's be clear. Twenty nine million dollars wasn't gonna really wasn't gonna. Infinity War and Solo aren't the same genre, but let us not mince words. They are an overlapping demographic, and even though for that's twenty nine million, that granted Solo probably wasn't going to make because Deadpool two was also out, and I think that was a mistake also. Deadpool 2 probably would have made as much as the original Deadpool had it not had as much competition going on with freaking Avengers. Because in week, because Deadpool came out the previous week, and oh god, it's ah, oh, it's no wait no I take that back sorry, it's it's uh, all that mistake all the mistakes I'm making right now actually Avengers had only made, only made seventeen million. Uh, I believe the following day with Solo, I be- or following week with Solo, still overlapping demographic. But honestly, it was more Deadpool that hurt it than anything else. Whose genius idea was it to open it up the week after Deadpool? Because you not only hurt Deadpool, not that Disney cared about that, which Deadpool still was fine. It made money, it made a lot of money. But you, that, you really hurt Solo on that. I have no doubt you hurt Solo big time on that. I still stand by. You might have been able to get a, this. Uh, I understand why I didn't do it in December this year. It was too packed. But um, I do believe you could have done it in August, and it probably would have been okay. Maybe. Maybe. At least it probably would have made more than $400 million. Uh, But I digress. Still, though, you have Avengers Infinity War, which made, profit-wise, $815 million. Let's be clear. It made $2 billion, but take the third out. And you're looking at a film that maybe made then about $1.3 billion. Then factor marketing, which was probably huge. And you're looking at a film that probably made about $815. Let's be clear. $815 million is enough to finance a couple Marvel films. Um, and then speaking of which, Black Panther still made about $548 million. Because it made $1.3 before everything goes into effect. And man, the Incredibles 2 also made over a billion dollars. Four points, four hundred and seventy-eight. Amon Wasp made one hundred and fifty-three million. Really, the only big losses uh, this year were on A Wrinkle in Time, Solo, and Mary and um, uh, but where are you? Nutcracker. Nut- Nutcracker was the other one. Yeah. Uh, and, and Mary Poppins at the time, but Mary Poppins ultimately will not bomb. It will do fine. So, the question becomes, what's this year gonna uh, hold for us? I mean. What predictions can I make for a box office this year? Who do I think will be the highest grossing studio of this year? Well, if I'm going to be flat out honest, I do think it's going to be Disney again. Uh, because you have a no particular order. Mac, why don't we just go month to month real quick here? That I re- that I can remember for Disney. Uh, we got Captain Marvel, Avengers Endgame, Aladdin, uh... Toy Story 4, Lion King, Dumbo, I forgot Dumbo going through there. Uh, I think Artemis Fowl could possibly do something. I haven't even watched a trailer for that one yet. Uh, Star Wars Episode 9, that's going to be a billion dollars. Easy. Um, and I think, by the way, just to end this real quick, with Star Wars 9, they're doing the smart thing. They're doing what DC did with Aquaman, and it's paying off big for Aquaman. 
now, granted, it's, that's not the only reason Aquaman's doing well, but it helped Aquaman. Aquaman ha- came out a full year and a half after uh, uh, Wonder Woman, I believe. No, Justice League. Uh, or not a full year and a half, but close to a year, almost over a year after Justice League came out. Justice League pretty much bombed. So they had a year to basically let things settle, change the narrative, clear the flow, make a good movie, and they did, and it's killing it at the box office. Highest grossing DCU movie. I think they, they made this smart play with this. They There was, instead of putting Solo in December, uh, first off, it would have been killed, but having a, over a year and a half now, to let the dust settle on Star Wars, let us get back in the mood for Star Wars again, kind of settle our egos and our bitch fits as nerds, and be like, all right, all right, all right, that this is what happened. We gotta live with it. All right, let's go and uh, let's I hope this next one can kick, uh, you know, nail it, can bring it home. So yeah, I I think they're doing a really smart thing with that. We haven't re- heard any problem. Of course, we didn't hear any problems with Last Jedi, and look how that turned out for some people. I like Last Jedi. Though I will at some point do a discussion video of how to improve The Last Jedi, from my viewpoint. Um, but yeah, ultimately, it's I feel it's going to be Disney again. Although, I will say, Warner Brothers stands a shot... I mean, I still think Disney will be the highest grossing studio of the year, but Warner Brothers and Universal both have some good films coming out this year. Sony, I think, has got a couple good solid films coming out this year also. So, it's, it could theoretically be anyone's game. I do think, though, it will be... Disney. I think Disney has the chance of not just having God knows how many billion dollar films, but Endgame stands a good chance of making another two, bi- at least two billion. Um, based coming off of Infinity War, which was only the fourth film in history to hit two billion out of over half a million films, only four have ever done that. And well, I've heard a lot of people say Lion King stands a shot at two billion. And you know what? I given the reaction, I've heard a lot of people given that. And I loved it. I lo- loved that little teaser. I thought that was good. Yeah. And let's be clear. If Star Wars Episode Nine can be can get recapture what we kind of felt with The Force Awakens, so that was a bit of a lightning in the ball situation, can really bring it home, I think you could possibly see $2 billion with Star Wars. It's not as likely, but I think it's still in the realm of possibility. Everything else, I don't think you're going to get $2 billion with anything else, although Toy Story 4, I feel confident you're going to get a billion dollars out of that. Um... I think it's possible for either Aladdin or Dumbo to hit a billion. I'm I'm not certain on that, but I think it's possible. Um, in terms of any other, I think Godzilla: King of the Monsters is also another film. Like talking about films that could hit a billion dollars, maybe that's a video I can do. My spec: what films could make a billion this year? What films could make two billion? All that. Maybe that's a video I'll do at some point. I've gone on long enough though. See if I can get claim uh, uh, since just in under thirty minutes. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had fun doing it. I'll do it at the end of every year. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, you want us to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review of it, uh, review, <laughs> review of it at some point. Uh, and ideas for um, hot, who would win Star Wars Superman, Superhero Magic, anything I do on the channel, what if. Put in the comments below. Let me know. You'll notice there's no review for Escape Room today, uh, up this week. I'll explain more about that on the box office video. Needless to say, I went to go see it, but something ha- uh, something happened that made me have to leave the theater. Um, I wasn't, for what it was worth, I was enjoying it for what it was. Um, but regardless. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time, folks. Later.